Hello and welcome to Top of the World. The Arctic blast that we've been suffering with has uh, kind of let go. So today, compared to the last couple of weeks, it's like summer and we can start running the trails. So this is a piece of forest here that I cleared of willow four years ago and it's left the birch and it's time to thin out the big birch now and let the small birch grow. So this whole area here, you couldn't even walk through this. It's like, uh, if you look at some of my other videos, like the area of land I worked, uh, not that far over there. But um, yeah, so today it's about the snowmobile and it's about starting to compact the trails in. Now I've already made a start on the main trails. Um, how deep is the snow? Uh, there we go, knee deep. So um, it's, I don't want to allow it to get any deeper than this before I start running it because I just fall over on the snowmobile. So I've kind of run a couple of rings, but now I need to break trail through here. So there's no way I can fell these birch and pull them, crab them, uh, grab them and do other things. I've got to run a trail right by them, fall them on the trail, get them up and get them onto the sled. So uh, yeah, that's today. And for those that you were, have been asking, Casper's paw, splitting his paw is fixed and because it's safe enough for me to come out and work, it's safe enough for him to come out and play. He is just over there. Come on, son. Come. Oh, he's in the ditch. You can, there you go. You can see him over there. So he's happy. He can come out and play. Anyway, so that's it. That's enough chit-chat. We've got to start breaking these trails. Now, uh, due to my back all the way through the year, and the landowner's back and unfortunately he's my good friend and is currently in hospital which is you know uh anyway it's not been bushwhacked so i'm just having to knock down the small trees with the snowmobile as i go normally i i would like to have got this lot flat and well he would have done it but he's just not able to here we go here's the snowy dog somewhere over here there he is fighting fit and happy to be outside at last we've been stuck inside uh for too long. So we're all happy, we're gonna start breaking these trails. That's my equipment trailer. That's where my chainsaws, petrol, oil, grips, logs, straps, everything else goes. And I can only haul this like this while it's empty. So what I do is when I get where I'm going, drop the trailer, take that to my central point of cutting, drop that, come back, hook up the sled. 
And that's it. That's how we do that. There's a happy puppy. There's a very happy puppy. <laughs> so we've been restricted to 15 or 20 minutes outside for weeks. We've been outside for an hour and a half now. It's time to go in and take coffee and get him to defrost. Come on, then. let's go. Let's get coffee. Come on, coffee. Ooh, yeah, the snow. Do what I take with me. Well, I'll tell you what's missing. My snowshoes. So I've got me trusty Husqvarna 550 XP. I've got me big steel, just in case. And then uh, wedges, sharpeners, chains, petrol, oil, axe, markers, log grips, the normal sort of stuff. Yeah, definitely forgot my snowshoes. That's not good. It's not so deep you can't get around. It's just easier with your snowshoes. And then uh, in the back of the scooter. Ah, oh, that's what we're looking for. A few extra loading chains, a couple of straps, some coolant. That's it. But now. I'll tell you what else it is. It's two up. I don't know. It's a minus nine, I think. I don't know if I'm going to be able to log in this because um, obviously I'm uh, acclimatised down to somewhere between minus 20 and minus 30, and it is, you know, how ridiculous is that? But, um, I've said for a few years my ideal logging temperature is between minus 14 and minus 20, minus 18. Um, and then you can only strip down to one layer, but I am uh, feeling warm, which means I'm on the verge of sweating, which I can't do. So uh, I may, because it's so warm, I have to abandon this and go back, change my suit for my leggings and uh, a check shirt and grab my snowshoes. But firstly, 
coffee in this beautiful, beautiful landscape. Right, that's better, I've changed. I put something a lot more lightweight on. So, uh, my back, well, that's obviously uh, was a major issue 10 months ago and uh, put me completely out of action, unable to walk for four months until thankfully the great surgeons here operated. Uh, during that four months and then the slowness of the recovery and my general slowness of moving around, I've been and got fat. A lot fatter than I would have liked. Anyway, so, and I, when I say fat, my ideal weight, 75 kilograms, and I'm up to 92, 93. So putting these salad pets on, I can only liken to it to a, a fat man putting a wet wetsuit on, two sizes too small for him. Anyway, now I've got over that, and um, I'm donning me, me snowshoes, I'm just going to give you a little bit of my insight as to what I'm going to cut, why I'm going to cut it, because I'm on a piece of land I don't want to cut from, but I've got no choice. It, it's got to be thinned, and um, it's one of the places I can cut from, so I'm going to cut, and I'll show you my thought process. So we're stood here in what we're going to call our layup platform, our base station, and... Uh, there's far, far too many trees here. So the first ones I'm going to take out for firewood is anything that's got a bend in it or got a split in it. Ugly. Really ugly. Ugly. There are some younger trees behind there, right, that are lovely and straight and will grow into big ones. So let me show you what I'm looking for for an ideal birch to allow it to grow. That one there is tall and straight and a beautiful example of what will grow into a nice big birch. All these ones that are split, or they're wobbly, or they're no good, that's firewood. This birch here, not only is it a good breeding stock for other birch, looks mighty fine. And uh, in 10 or 15 years time, that will just slab up beautifully. And, and these ones here that are scrabbly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick all the nasty ones out first and where I've got a big bunch of trees like over here I'll take out the big trees and leave the small trees to grow. Things like this birch here up against these pine, this is white pine, that's no good, that don't want to be there, that can come out. Um, that one there now is split halfway up and it's going to suffer because it's too close so we'll take that one out. Too many over here so then it's a thought process of these two. What I'll do is these two small ones is I'll pick the finest and the strongest and the straightest and leave that and take the one out next to it. And that's basically how we'll go through. Once we've cleared out everything this side of the fir, we'll move into the more denser stuff the other side. But you can see there's way too many birch here and way, way too many birch through there. So some of the smaller ones, well, they'll have to come out because they're just too close and they're easy just to... Um, cut up and they'll go in as, as straight logs. But if you don't do it, then they'll impede each other and you'll get slow growth and you'll get scrappy trees. So we're gonna start thinning through here to start with. So my plan would be to thin through here up to the fir tree line all the way around and then move the other side of the fir tree line. And over here, like I say, I took all the weeds out four years ago, all the salu. And it's amazing how quickly the birch has then grown on. And it goes quite a way up there, it's a sizable piece of land. And on the other side of the creek over there, that's where I was working. Um, the video trees can be weeds over there. Um, there's only a few need to come out over there because they look so, so nice. But birch up against fir, it doesn't need to be there anymore and anything that's not good. So then, we'll make a start.
I won't bore you with the bucking. Right, so that gives you a better idea now of what I could see. You see the smaller ones behind, nice, straight, strong ones. So that's taken out these scrabbly ones in the front. Now we'll take out some from behind and we'll need a nice line of straight, good quality birch. That leaning one there, that's out, that's split. That split at the top there, look. Leave this one on the corner here. Take out the scrabbly one behind that one. Leave that one. Leave that one. Take out that one. Leave that one. And, and so on and so forth. And that's how we'll go through. That's the first laid there. I'm just taking the tops and the small stuff. Uh, but not all of that's rubbish either. I try and use as much of the tree as I can, as I've said before. So this is the small stuff and the tops. And then uh, once I get some of the thinnings, the straight ones, on top of the sled, then I can pick those up and put them on top because I've cut them short at uh, a length and weight I can lift. All right, let's get this into the yard then. Come back, do some more. Are you having a bath? These trails have opened up a lot more room for the dogs to be able to play. Hello, hey, hey, yeah. So this, the golden lab, this is Pascal. And the female black lab, that's Tesla. You think Thomas had a sense of humour? Tesla and Pascal, isn't it? Eh? Did your dad have a sense of humour, did he? Yeah, he did. taken out some of the smaller thinnings so that I've got a bed. A few years ago I was lifting these birch on air at four or five meter lengths. Now I'm leaving these stumps, these big ones, higher so that I can do one or two things. I can either get them out or cut them flush. If I try and cut them flush with the snow now, it'd be no good, I'll do it when the snow's finished. Right, that'll do for that load because uh, I'm still compacting the trail. If you put too much on it before it's compacted hard, You'll just dig a big hole, dig yourself into trouble. Before I haul that one out, that's the second load.
there we go. That's load number two. The light's going. I've got to change my gloves because they're wet. Grab a cup of coffee and uh, go for one more load and then bring the... Go for one more load, I think. Yeah. So that's some of last year's. So they're stuck up there waiting to go in there. But they can't go in there because the empties have got to come out. And this was... Uh, this is the shed, the Snowmobile shed. So I built that in there and then dragged it out and turned it on the corner and I've never had an opportunity to move it since. But I built that with half my stomach hanging out just before my hernia operation two years ago. Um, I wonder why I got a hernia. Can't imagine. Can't imagine. wonder why I had a bad back. My back hurts now, I'll tell you. It's not good. I need a crane. I know it don't come across on camera, but um, kind of losing the light here. It's going to go real quick. So uh, we didn't get a third load in. We did get all our equipment back. Um, I've left the sled there and just brought the saws and the equipment back. So uh, that's two loads in and all the trails run. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, consider it. Catch you on the next one. Bye for now.